This is Pod Populi, podcast for the people. Hi, this is Pamela Wirth with the Encourage Your Wellness podcast, and today I have Dr. Wendy Myers, naturopathic doctor, founder of MyersDetox.com, and is an internationally recognized expert on heavy metal detox, anti-aging, and bioenergetics. Uh, this certainly is super important when it comes to any anti-aging, uh, combating disease, and increasing longevity. So thank you so much, doctor, for being here. Yes, thanks for having me. All right. So heavy metal detox, what is it? How do you test for it? What do you do? Yes. So when it comes to heavy metals, you know, we've all heard about mercury and lead and arsenic, but there's many, many other metals that uh, really don't get a lot of in the uh, information in the spotlight. And, you know, the thing is when you really think about it and you look around your desk in your room, look at everything that has metals in it. And when you're touching that, that can soak through your skin. And we're also getting metals in our air, food, and water. So you, we breathe 11,000 liters of air a day or more. That, that's the number one entry point for heavy metals and toxins into our body. So a lot of us are trying to eat organic food, organic food still has heavy metals and 7% is contaminated with pesticides. And then we look at our water, we're drinking filtered water, we're showering in super toxic water. And I'm, so I'm not saying this stuff to like scare people, but just to give people a reality check is this stuff is invisible. We can't see it, smell it, but it is dramatically impacting our health. When you look at the research uh, Dr. Joe Pizzorno, who's the founder of Bastyr University, has said he has he has a book with over 40,000 research citations. He does his homework. He has said that seven, I think it's 19% of all cause mortality is caused by lead. I mean, just one heavy metal. And, and he says that one third of fatal heart attacks are due indirectly to lead. So there's a lot less lead in our environment than it is in our grandparents' time. Our grandparents are full of lead. There was lead paint, leaded gasoline, many, many, uh, a, lot, a lot of exposure there that today is causing them dementia, heart disease, uh, cataracts, and uh, fatigue, chronic fatigue, and things like that, that masks itself as old age. Um, but uh, there's many, many other metals that uh, are in our body that are stored in our fat and our brain, promoting obesity, uh, stored in our bones and uh, impacting our health in so many different ways, uh, causing so many different symptoms. And when you go to your doctors and you present with symptoms, they're not looking at any of the underlying root causes, especially heavy metals. And so for me, it's my mission to educate people about uh, this huge problem that largely goes to overlooked that you need to be paying attention to if you want to live a long, healthy, disease-free, medication-free life, because that's my goal. That's what I want after I watched my father die of esophageal cancer and after my daughter was diagnosed with autism, who's now 100% recovered, and after I watched all my family members, polypharma, just their whole life is symptoms and doctor and medications and trying this. I'm just, I'm not doing that. So that's not what I'm doing. And I also want to teach other people how they can live their life in, in the same way and, and enjoy the, their golden years. I'm 52. I'm going to, I'm going to be 52 in like two months. And I assure you heavy metal detox is very anti-aging because you're getting rid of all these toxins that are using up all your antioxidants that are a catalyst to make biological processes happen faster in your body. So they're aging your body. And like, so like I said, they just cause a lot of different health issues, but they can all be removed quite easily. Okay. So I've heard people say different things about how you find out. Is it um, through urine? Is it a blood test? Is it hair analysis? What should you do? What's the most um, accurate? Yeah, so there isn't any one perfect heavy metals test, okay? Because some heavy metals come out in the hair, some come out in the urine, and some come out in the stool. And then a lot of people uh, are there because if they have complex chronic illness, chronic fatigue, their body is not detoxing and it's not going to come out on heavy metal. Because if you are, if you don't have any energy, 
Uh, if you, if you uh, are, you know, your body is sensing a lot of threats in your environment and has shut down your energy production, the last priority in your body is detoxification. So many times people get uh, false negatives where they have tests, hair, urine, stool, or blood, where they have nothing uh, in those tests. They have, they're not excreting any heavy metals and they're like, oh, uh, you know, that's not my problem next. And it's, it's statistically impossible to not have heavy metals. It's impossible. They're everywhere. You know, it, they're being released into our environment from manufacturing all those smokestacks. They're everywhere in the world, just pumping out toxins, country, uh, like, uh, companies are legally dumping into our lakes and rivers, no matter what the regulations are. Um, th these toxins are everywhere. And so it's impossible not to have them. So it doesn't necessarily matter what heavy metals tests say. We all have them, but heavy metals tests can give you a really good guide to knowing what kind of supplements you should take. And over time, you know, you want to test every six months to a year. And then over time, you'll see different metals coming out out of your fat, out of your brain, out of your glands and organs, storage sites and bones. And then you can course correct with each test and take specific supplements that remove the heavy metals that you're seeing in your, in your tests. But all the while, uh, you could be doing infrared saunas, ionic foot baths, liver support, coffee enemas, liver flushing. You know, I do something on a daily basis for detoxification. And so it's just become kind of like a lifestyle because detox is a lifestyle. It's not something like, oh, I'm going to do a spring three, three, you know, three day juice cleanse. Like that's just not, not adequate. Every little bit helps, but you know, you need to be doing something on a daily basis because say I'm 52, I've spent five decades accumulating all of this stuff in my body and eating as a kid, eating pop tarts and just all kinds of like horrifying food that's full of heavy metals, uh, you know, like we all have and somehow survived. And, you know, and every day I'm exposed to more stuff. So, you know, there's that there, you're exposed to hundreds, if not thousands of different toxins, chemicals and your, your beauty products in your home and just in, in, everywhere. But there's so much that you can do about it. You can get all this garbage out of your body and just, uh, you know, adopting kind of thinking about something daily that you can be doing to remove the stuff and support your liver. And, 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 you know, for me, I don't think it takes a ton of time out of my day. A lot of things I do foot baths or saunas, I can do other things while I'm doing those. So it's not like, you know, I'm not losing time in my day by, you know, embarking on those, those detox protocols. Yeah. The ionic foot bath is interesting. I mean, I got mine off Amazon and it's, uh, it was not cost prohibitive at all. And it's, um, it's kind of gross, but super interesting at the same time to imagine all this stuff coming out of the bottom of your feet. Um, yes. so, okay, look, if I'm a family member, I know how to take care of myself. Um, I may or may not have, have time or prioritize it, but I think what's probably more overwhelming is what if you've got, um, a sick child, a sick parent, like, where do you start? How do you help yeah. your family member kind of get their hands around what's happening with them from whatever it may be, chronic, acute. Um, you know, I was chatting with somebody today and they said, well, you know, I've been going through chemotherapy and now I have rheumatoid arthritis. And I was like, and I'm thinking to myself, your body's overloaded and you've got to, you know, get detoxing some of that chemo back out. Um, but it's a sidebar. So. Yes. Well, you know, one of the easiest places to start, like I mentioned is minerals. So minerals push out toxins out of the body. And it, it, the easiest thing to do is put salt in your water. I do not drink water without salt in it because you don't retain water if uh, you don't have enough minerals in your body. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why after you eat a really salty meal, you're super thirsty. You know, your body's trying to get more water. It's one in one part to flush it out. Um, but you, to retain water, to stay hydrated, you need minerals, but the majority of people are deficient. So we need a lot of magnesium. We need five times our body weight in milligrams per day. So if you weigh hundred pounds, you need 500 milligrams per day. Probably you're probably not taking that. And that's the most crucial mineral for detoxification. I love magnesium glycinate, magnesium malate, things like that. Um, but you need, you know, selenium, you need potassium, you need, uh, zinc, you need calcium to remove lead out of your body. So these are the macro minerals that I take, you know, on, uh, on a daily basis. And then plus the, the trace minerals, I, I use sea salt 
you don't need a fancy expensive supplement uh, for trace minerals. And so uh, after that, you can take things called binders, which just absorb toxins like a sponge. Modified citrus pectins are amazing. I have a product called Citra Cleanse that also have fulvic humic acid, or you can take charcoal, activated charcoal, zeolites, a, a chlorella is a natural one, not as strong as the other ones, but uh, very natural and nutritious. And so I take a combination of those, I kind of rotate them and I'm taking something on a daily basis uh, as a binder. Mm -hmm. And after that, I would say, um, short of throwing everything in the kitchen sink, as far as detox supplements, which I think a lot of people get carried away with, um, I would much rather see someone do an ionic foot bath. I think those are just so easy to do. Anyone can do them, no matter how ill, how young, whatever is going on with them, it doesn't matter. And they're so amazing for, uh, you know, releasing and expelling stagnant lymph getting your lymph flowing, uh, getting toxins out of your body. And they're not just going to the water. You're excreting uh, after two to three days after the foot bath, excreting more toxins in your urine and your stool mm -hmm. and then through your sweat as well. So they're incredibly effective. Not all of them are good. I do not recommend getting a cheap one off the internet. Okay. Because they have to have a certain amount of power in order to work, or it's a complete waste of your time and money. So the only one that I recommend, there's a couple I recommend, but the most, the least expensive one is healthandmed.com. So that's a really high quality one that you can get for like $5.99, I, I believe is the price point. It might change at some point, um, but that's a re that's one of the least expensive, most powerful ones, because you have to have 20 volts and at least two and a half amps for it to really give you enough power to pull the toxins out. Okay. And it works by ionization. It, you put, you get lots of negative ions in your body, which have its health benefits. And that attracts the, the positive uh, charge of heavy metals. So it binds onto those, takes them out of the body up out of the 4,000 pores in your feet. And you can see the sludge in the water. I mean, it's gross. I just did a webinar on them and we went through like maybe 15 different patient stories and looked at their foot baths and they're all different colors. I mean, I, I, I didn't, I went like three years without doing one because I had done like 200 hours of foot baths and I just stopped. I was like, okay, I'm good after 200 hours. And then I just started doing them again recently. And the water is it's black sludge. It, and when I stopped doing them, it was kind of light brown. And there, I was living in Mexico for three years and it just, I picked up all kinds of crazy stuff there, obviously, because <laughs> my, my foot thoughts were so gross, but yeah, so uh, really, really important to, you know, incorporate these different detox strategies, but you know, another inexpensive thing you can do is coffee enemas, not for children. You know, we want these for adults or, you know, there's coffee enema kits you can buy if you, you're not able to lay on the ground or you're not mobile there. There's coffee enema kits you can get that uh, use a pump where you can be sitting down, but those are amazing for cleaning the liver. Just, uh, just fantastic for supporting the liver, which is your main detox organ. You need to give your liver a lot of love. Our livers are very, very overloaded, overwhelmed. And that's evidenced by the fact that 100 million people in the US alone have fatty liver disease. So you're not gonna be detoxing that great if you have fatty liver disease, your liver is compromised. So, and that's just kind of a, some, some basics, um, but there's more things that you can do. And um, I'm like I mentioned before, I don't think I answered your question before about the heavy metals testing. I start with hair mineral analysis or an HTMA. That's what I start with people. It's inexpensive. It's easy to do at home. It gives us a ton of information. You know, usually a, a, a medical doctor, you go in their office, they'll give it a urine test that gives a chelating agent, agent to push, you know, push the heavy metals out. Um, but that can be problematic for, uh, you know, uh, some of the population, especially if they're very, very ill, that can really push them over the edge. So I don't like to use chelating agents uh, typically, but the hair test gives us uh, great information uh, upon which to, you know, do a customized detox protocol for someone. So a lot of questions there. Yeah. <laughs> so all that, all, all that info. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, 
what about all these GLP ones that are in the market at the moment? How is that influencing heavy metal detox, weight loss, obesity, um, pressure on the liver? Um, have you done any thoughts or research into any of this? Yes. Yeah. And I've taken them also. Um, so the, the GLP one, uh, inhibitors are, you know, these are like Ozempic and some of the other, the terzepatide peptides, uh, which are, you know, I, I really think are life-saving medications for, and peptides, they're just peptides is all they are. Um, that they really are amazing for people that have diabetes and they need to lose weight. Um, you know, cause the, the diabetic condition is exacerbated by being overweight. Um, so I think they're amazing in that regard because being overweight does contribute to morbidity and, and health issues. However, on the other flip side of that, a lot of people are using them that really are not candidates. Uh, they're not diabetic. They're not overweight. They just want to lose 20 pounds. And I totally get it. I'm right there with you. Um, but they slow down your digestion and that will in turn cause you can have an overgrowth of pathogenic uh, infections in your intestines, your small intestine, you know, like candida, like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And things like that, which is a natural occurrence when you slow down the transit of food through your digestive tract, okay? And also that causes constipation, which is a problem because, you know, our feces are how we release toxins. So if that those feces are sitting in your intestines, you can reabsorb toxins back into your, your system. And that puts a big a load on your liver as well, because if your your intestines, your gut is overloaded with bacteria, which doesn't happen right away, but it'll, it'll happen at some point in a you know a few months, um, your liver has to deal with all that that bacteria and the excretions of the bacteria, and it's just another problem the liver uh, has to deal with, you know, um, not to mention just it's just an increased burden on the body. And so we don't have any statistics out yet, but they have seen an increase in rats and thyroid cancers and, and intestinal cancers and things like that, which is not really surprising um, given that it slows down the transit of food. Um, so my vote is yes, if you are a diabetic or are severely overweight, um, because it used on a temporary basis or occasional basis, because that's for sure, life-threatening, uh, or, or it can be, it can be a problem. But if you are normal weight, or you just want to lose 20 or 30 pounds, you know, I, I would vote against it because the jury is still out. We, it's, you know, it's, these drugs have been on the market since like 2017 as a medication. However, the peptides have been used for, for decades, you know, so there, we just don't know what the the final call is going to be as far as increased cancer rates. So you can take them, but you're kind of playing Russian roulette. And I would never want to take them without doing some sort of like coffee enemas or enemas or something to relieve the constipation. Certainly everyone doesn't have that, uh, that side effect, uh, but I mean, many people do. And there's just, you know, uh, they're just a price to pay for you know, any kind of shortcut people want to take and long-term you can't take it forever. You just can't. So then you're back to where you were before, which is you still have to exercise every day and you still have to eat a healthy diet and you still have to cut the carbs and sugar. So maybe just start with that right away and just over time, you know, just get better and better at practicing doing that. Yeah. Or maybe combine it with something like a dandelion root or something. If you're really going to put yourself through this, I don't know, make sure things are moving along. Um, when, when people hear peptides, you know, there's also some talk now in the market around like NAD, NMN, how are those similar, different? I mean, as long as we got on this path, I figured I'd ask. Yes. Um, well, they're, they're completely different than peptides. I mean, those are the NAD, I just don't think those work for everyone for increasing mitochondrial energy production. 
Um, you know, I've done IVs of that and taken injections of that, and they can give you like a little bit of a boost. Um, but I just don't think that they are, it's just not something I think is really worth it. I think mean, there people are better off taking glutathione to increase mitochondrial energy output and removing toxins from their body, which are throwing a huge wrench into mitochondrial energy output. Um, because your mitochondria are these little, um, like environmental sensors, you know, they sense threats in your environment. They're not just mindless energy producers. So when you, um, when you have a lot of toxins in your body or infections, you know, your mitochondria will sense that threat and will, and can dial down energy production because it doesn't want to feed the, the other infections that you have. That's why you get tired when you're sick. It's called the, the cell danger response. And so your Robert, Dr. Robert Navio's work. So he's dialing down, they're dialing down the energy production and, um, and you get tired. So by removing toxins that interfere in mitochondrial functioning, that can go a long way to improving energy versus just thinking, taking a supplement and that you're good, I think is, um, you know, kind of reductionist thinking, but I do like the NMN. There is research that shows that, you know, taking one gram of that a day, um, can be very, very helpful for longevity. I know David Sinclair has mentioned he's a researcher, uh, on longevity has said, you know, he takes one milligram of that a day along with one milligram of resveratrol among other things. But, you know, and supplements are great. I do stuff. I take spirulina every day. I think it's an amazing, amazing superfood. Like one little tablet of that is like a whole plate of vegetables with the equivalent of the nutrients and minerals. And you for sure have less cravings when you take things like spirulina. So I love taking superfoods uh, in the morning and things like NMN for sure is part of my regime. But, uh, but you really want to think in terms of removing roadblocks to longevity and uh, metabolism and your health in general, like removing toxins, because that will go a lot farther uh, in the long run and have a much bigger return on investment than taking various targeted supplements that you know, can get very expensive too. Yeah. When we were going through the health challenges in our family, um, the doctor had led us down the road of inflammation. And basically I learned how to do a deep dive on what causes inflammation and heavy metals was a very large piece of that. Interestingly, and still kind of new ish, I think is EMF and 5g and how this impacts our body and when it causes inflammation, when it doesn't, and should we really sleep with our phones next to our bed and what's really happening and make sure that the cable box is on the other side of the house and doesn't share a wall with someone's bed or, you know, anything that you've learned in this space that you think is worth sharing. Yeah. So EMF is something, it's another one of those invisible threats that people just don't think about. And it took me a long time to go down that rabbit hole because it just, there's just so many other pressing things that you feel like you need to work on, on your health. So a lot of people just don't research the EMF. I actually have a course, the five day, five day EMF detox challenge that just goes over the basics to, to help people kind of figure out what they need to do, where the threats are in their home. And um, the easiest, the look, so what EMF does to your body is it's a non-native frequency. So we have frequencies our bodies emit. We have brain waves that our bodies emit. We have a heart wave that extends 10 feet in diameter around our body or three meters around our body. And so EMFs come in, there are these harsh frequencies that come in and interfere in those signals and they interfere in our body's communication systems. That's where we see these physical uh, symptoms, the, the, the reduction in sleep, the reduction in concentration, uh, problem with, uh, blood sugar, glucose metabolism cells where you're, you know, holding the phone, uh, and break down our immune system functioning, the, all the myriad number of symptoms, uh, of which there are many as a result of EMF, but mainly, you know, there's brain fog, fatigue, and, and poor sleep are the biggest kind of uh, effects of those, Not, but brain tumors also, especially if you're holding your phone uh, in the same place, people tend to get the tumor in their brain and childhood leukemia uh, as well. Uh, children are sleeping in a room and unbeknownst to the parent, there's just like a huge beam, a beam of EMF 
from a, from whatever it could be from their um, a light in the room light bulbs can be crazy emf producers or there could be like a cell phone tower outside the school or outside the home and they're just not thinking about it and and that is a big contributor to childhood leukemia uh sadly um but easy things that people can do or I don't have my cell phone. I love my cell phone. You know, we live in a, with our cell phones. I keep mine an arm's length distance away from me because distance is key. The farther you are away from the source, the less it's going to impact you. So you can put on an airplane mode or turn it off um, and or keep it three feet away from you. Um, another thing that you can do is get a little $160 tri-field meter and go around your home and play detective. Like I realized the light, the O-ring light I use when I'm podcasting, it was emitting crazy amounts of EMF. I was just shocked. And I actually learned this when I was filming my course, because I, the EMF course, of course, because uh, I was going around with the trimeter, like, you know, filming that. And I was like, oh my God, that's why I'm so exhausted after I do a podcast. I thought I was just emitting like a, you know, just, it was just tiring my brain talking for an hour, but it was my light, my own ring light. Um, so I got a different one or, or, you know, light bulbs can be big emitters, microwaves, televisions in your bedroom. So I turn off all the electronics in my bedroom or I don't have them in there anymore um, or certainly just unplug them. Just plug them in when you use them. You don't need to plug in all the time. And then uh, some people are super, super sensitive, like they call them HSPs or highly sensitive people, uh, it's about 20% of the population. Those people are going to be very affected by EMF. And again, you'll go to your doctor and the doctor's like, here's a psychiatrist card, you know, cuckoo bird, uh, because when really their body is just very sensitive to, to EMF and it's causing chronic fatigue, even inability to work, they just can't function. And so they, they have to take more drastic measures like turning off the breaker in their bedroom at night or getting, you can get these like silver coated sheets or silver coated Faraday cages uh, that have silver threads that you can sleep in at night that just, you know, give your body a rest from these constant, um, this constant barrage of EMF, turning off your Wi Fi router at night. Um, there's a lot of different um, things you can do, but, you know, it's just everywhere in our environment. You know, it and, and it's going only going to increase. It has only increased over the decades, and it will continue to increase. And you know, if you turn on your Wi-Fi router, sometimes you can. If you live in a city, I mean, you can have fifty or a hundred Wi-Fi routers. I mean, if you you really understand how the body works, at how our brain waves, heart waves, and how really a lot of the communication in our body happens on waves of information, like information is transferred to our body on energy waves. It works the same way your cell phone works. Information data packets travel on energy waves wirelessly to your cell phone, wirelessly to your computer. Our body works the same way. And any kind of EMF frequencies that come in are gonna interfere in that. And then you're gonna see a physical breakdown in functioning as a result, okay? And so, um, yeah. So there, like I said, there's a lot of things you can do and it's it much more complex than what I've said, but I just wanted to kind of gloss over that and give you a few tips. No, it's, it's a lot to think about. Um, as people are listening to this and they want to learn more about you and what you do, where can they find out more? Is there anything that I may have missed and wanted to um, make sure that you share with people? Yes. You can find me at myersdetox.com and you can take my heavy metals quiz at heavymetalsquiz.com. It just takes a couple of seconds. So you can kind of get your score based on some lifestyle questions of how toxic are you? And you can get a free video series that, you know, answers a lot of frequently asked questions that people have, you know, when they're embarking on a detox journey, people have various questions that I'm very familiar with as I worked with thousands of patients. And so I just wanted to distill it down into like a free video series that people get after they take the quiz. Um, but you can find me on um, all of the social media at Myers Detox, on YouTube at Wendy Myers, and I'm on Rumble. I'm just, I'm on all the platforms, but mostly at Myers Detox. Super. Thank you so much, doctor. Is there anything that I forgot to ask you about? 
No, I mean, that's, I mean, we pretty much covered a lot of the basics, you know, but my plea to people is to not wait until you have a diagnosis. Don't wait until, you know, I, I like heed your body's call. If you are feeling more tired than normal, if you're feeling brain fogged, if you're feeling like you're gaining weight or you're, you know, you just don't feel like yourself and say you're in your thirties, forties, fifties, you should not be having any health symptoms, you know, and if you do, don't ignore that. It's your body's many cries for help. Don't ignore that. There's an underlying root cause of those symptoms. And many times it's heavy metals and chemicals. It could be other things as well. There could be mold, uh, causes a lot of health challenges for people and whatnot. Emotional trauma is a, certainly a factor. Diet and exercise, of course. I tend to I'm kind of bored with those topics. I like to talk about higher level things. I'll leave the nutrition exercise to the other people. But, um, you know, uh, when you, but if you've checked off all of those boxes, like me, you know, in my thirties, when I doing the diet check, doing the exercise, doing the emotional trauma work, you know, taking all these amazing supplements. And I still felt like crap. You know, I still woke up every morning feeling like I'd been hit by a train. And I also just was, just felt kind of meh. Like I just didn't feel excited about life. I had an amazing life, um, but I didn't feel excited about life or inspired. I felt kind of like gray and flat. Many heavy metals interfere in your neurotransmitters and your in the production of feel-good neurotransmitters. So all of these things for, for me, I knew there was instinctively something not right in my body. And that uh, I, I sought answers for, and I just very quickly happened upon uh, hair metal analysis, heavy metals testing, and was like, wow, I'd never really thought about this because I didn't think that Flint, Michigan's, or I, I didn't, I lived such a healthy life. I didn't think any of this applied to me, even though I'd read articles about mercury and lead and the problems. I just, it just wasn't resonating for me. It's something I needed to, to go down that rabbit hole you know, um, but in, in doing so and starting on a detox journey, I just feel so much better than I did in my thirties and even in my twenties, you know, and I just felt I have so much better energy, brain function, zest for life. Um, you know, I just feel so much healthier in so many ways and I have perfect labs. I don't have anything wrong with me. And, and I plan to keep it that way. And, and part of that, I, you know, attribute to heavy metal and chemical detoxification and my detox lifestyle. But I also do a lot of stuff, uh, bioenergetics, energy medicine, which is a whole other podcast. Um, but really detox took me a long way in, uh, you know, taking control of my health. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, doctor. And you've been so generous to add some freebies. So we'll add those in the show notes as well. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you.